Hey everyone, Cotton Candy TA here. Welcome to Beginner's Course Part 3, Levels, Support and Resistance. Okay, we are going to start this course a little differently. We are going to talk about a few things that we are going to cover in future lessons uh, first. This is going to allow people to not have questions uh, and give them clarity in this lesson. Uh, instead of following this material and thinking, okay, well what about this, what about that? We are going to cover um, the things we're, we're going to be talking about in the future first. That way you can focus on this lesson without having these lingering questions in your mind. Uh, the reality is lessons is probably going to be one of the toughest things you'll ever learn in trading. Uh, there's a reason why I had to break this down into about five, four, somewhere between four to six courses, probably five courses uh, thus far that I, that I can identify as valuable. If, if I were to do this all in one video, the video would probably end up being about six hours long and uh, would go over too much for, for, for me to conceptualize in one video uh, mentally and for you guys to um, grasp. So uh, what are we going to cover in the future? Uh, first thing is another video is going to focus on uh, advanced support and resistance, how to properly identify levels. A lot of times uh, I see traders marking out levels. I see uh, people not knowing how to properly see what a level really is. Uh, is a level at 100 sats? Is it at uh, maybe 110, 105? Is, that, is it at 98? Uh, for, for varying reasons, people are seeing levels on, on different spots. Um, but there is a clear way to identify exactly what a level is uh, to, to, to the actual sat. If it's 101 sats, there's a way to identify that that will be respected in the future. Okay, so how to properly identify levels is monumentally important. There, there is a lot of misinformation out there and uh, I hope I can clear that up for some of you guys. Okay, next advanced topic would be uh, gained versus lost. Uh, levels gained versus levels lost. Support lost versus support gained. There's a very interesting and advanced theory and concept that happens in, in trading and with levels. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much into describing uh, the nuances of it, but you, you can you can have a level that looks like resistance, but never really was resistance. But it will, but it is what is considered uh, support that was lost. You can have a high move up, and and that's not resistance. It's actually support lost, which is important to know because that's a theory in its own, and it means something different than resistance. So there's kind of four pseudo categories in there, which is support loss versus support gained. Uh, resistance and resistance loss versus resistance gained and support, of course. So, so four pseudo categories uh, with two major categories being support and resistance and, and it's four pseudo categories. Okay, uh, advanced levels two, uh, which has more to do with candles and uh, looking at moves in the moment. So kind of uh, the idea of watching a trade as it unfolds. Uh, looking at the candles, analyzing them, and, and, and dissecting what that move means in the moment. So that's going to be uh, candle touches, rejections, wicks, closes, all those things and how they affect levels and, and what it means. Uh, again, monumentally important, not so simple as people think. Uh, get into it later. And level strength relativity, uh, another very important topic. The, the strength of the level, whether it be monthly, weekly, hourly, four hourly, 15 minute, where do you start? How do you chart them? What's more important? What's going to be respected? What's not? Uh, I call this level strength relativity. So those are the four topics that we are going to cover in the future. Uh, and and I, I don't want you guys focusing this video on, on these topics because these are very advanced things and uh, I can foresee each of these videos taking me potentially 30 minutes to an hour and a half just discussing why these theories exist and how they are respected and how they work. Okay, so to start this, what is support? For those of you who don't know, support is a level that is uh, respected in terms of price. So support is a supporting level, right? Uh, so this is uh, ZRX right here, pretty popular coin lately. That's why I picked this. Uh, ZRX, so, so just, just to identify one quick level, we have a level here, okay? Uh, this is support. Now, why this is support? Again, we'll get into that in a, in a more advanced topic, but it is the high of a candle that's during the swing low of a move. So, this is support. What does support mean? Support means uh, a level or a price point which uh, is going to be respected in the future. Uh, it's going to have buying support there or it's going to have uh, 
some, some type of support that doesn't let it go past. And we can see in the future, this is a weekly chart. So this is a, this is a, a fairly strong level. So we can see in the future as, as this move goes down, uh, or sorry, as it goes up and down and kind of continues on over the span, uh, we see this level tested right there. Okay, uh, support was tested. So that's what support is. It is a level or a uh, point in time for um, a respecting of price, whether it be uh, respecting it up or down. That's what levels are. They are when price gets respected. Okay, so what is support? Well, that's what support is. What is resistance, right? Okay, let's just get this chart back up. Uh, resistance is the opposite. Right, uh, here's a level right here. Uh, where's my magnet tool? Okay, uh, so we've got a level right here. Uh, resistance is a point in the future that is the opposite of support. It is something that will resist price going past it. Okay, um, we've got one there, we've got one here. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter, either one. We'll work with this one for simplicity. Um, Level of resistance, that is the point where price will resist going past it for whatever reason, uh, whether people want to take profits uh, to do with uh, the theory of accumulation and distribution, which we talked about in a previous video, uh, or, or for, for other reasons. Uh, resistance ends up being a price where you will commonly see rejection. Just like support, there's a supporting of a price, there's also the rejecting of a price, right? So resistance and support, that is uh, your two... Your, your two founding pieces of levels, okay? Why does price get respected at these levels, okay? That's uh, next on the list here. Why does price get respected at these levels? Okay, let's go back to our chart. Price gets respected at these levels because there was interest in the past. Uh, you know, speaking of psychology and, and, and the theory of, of why these uh, levels get respected, is there was a reason from the past that this level was created. Right, the reason from the past that this level was created will will trigger a point of interest in the future. Uh, it will trigger a point where people are saying uh, this was a target in the past. We've identified this level, so we know we can buy that in the future uh, at that price. We know that buying here may not make sense because we have a level that we can target uh, in the future, which is your level of support, right? So level of support and levels of resistance get respected because they are targets. They are targets in price action. Um, if, if, if there is a target in mind, the smart trader will say, uh, I'm going to sell at this level, okay? They are gonna say, I am going to buy at this level because they know that's the lowest it's gonna go, which makes their dollar travel the furthest. They know that's the lowest it's gonna go or the highest that they can get for, for that uh, coin or for that trade or whatnot. Now, in this case, we can see this level wasn't respected. It, it was, uh, but it was then broken after. Um, more advanced stuff for another lesson. Okay, how does accumulation and distribution tie in? Uh, accumulation and distribution tie in because it is part of the founding principle of the move up, the move down, accumulation, distribution. Uh, in, in the previous video, uh, we talked about accumulation and distribution. Um, well, how does that tie in to levels? Well, at levels of support, you're going to see accumulation start, right? If we were to break this move down, uh, let's break it down into a four hour chart. Okay, well, let's find that level right we are looking right here at uh, at this level we can see the distribution was happening at this level over and over right we come up we test this level we distribute down we reaccumulate right we distribute up here for another reason uh, this was a new swing high so uh, not important levels respected um, distribution uh, happens at these levels so does so does accumulation happen on support you can see down here at the start of this move right if we go back to the daily, we can see that this level here, right, that offered support for accumulation. Okay, so let's go back to the hourly level. Find that again. That's going to be quite far back here. And uh, ju just to clarify, support is a science. It is. It happens down to the T. This is not something that... Um, comes close to or uh, ends up, uh, you know, end up being 100 sats away, if you can properly identify support and resistance, you will hit the nose uh, every single time. 
Okay, we are going to go and find that accumulation zone on the hourly chart. So this level of support here that happened, we can see that accumulation happened during a level of support. So when you guys are looking at uh, trading coins, buying, buying stocks, any, any, any type of uh, trades you enter, areas of support end up being accumulation, areas of resistance end up being distribution. Kind, kind of common sense in a way, but um, not really, not until you fully understand accumulation and distribution. The idea that this price is gonna be supported along this level uh, says that if this level is respected, we are in accumulation right so if that is true uh being an accumulation therefore we should have a move up afterwards okay well let's see what happens on the daily on the daily chart after we uh completely exhaust accumulation look what happens we completely exhaust accumulation off support and look what happens we move up in price so uh support resistance how does accumulation and distribution tie in that's how Okay, trend equals levels, right? So when we are talking about support and resistance, we refer to them as traders, as, as levels, as a whole. Uh, there are levels. Uh, support is a level. Resistance is a level. Uh, whether you're looking at trends, whether you're looking at support lines, resistance lines, these are all levels, right? Levels are to be respected. Uh, I'm going to pull up another trade here that I, I did uh, a little a little while ago maybe two weeks ago or uh, something of the sort so th this is uh, AE it's a coin that I chartered for people and uh, gave them a signal on to say hey guys look at this is a good trade to get into uh, I had gotten in right at the bottom touch of this trend so when I made this chart not not to get too advanced or to lose people here uh, I did some simple things right I identified some key levels of some swing lows on different time frames Right? I have different colored lines for different time frames. We won't get into what those are right now, just, just to know that's why I have different colored lines. Okay, uh, We have a trend line that was created, which is right here. So the low point of this, uh, the low point of this move uh, created a trend, kind of this red arrow up. And you can see this was respected the whole way through. We have a swing low here. We kind of come up to price action. This level was respected, right? We tried to wick past but rejected, which is an important concept in itself. Uh, we, we won't get into why, but this is called uh, first touch or first test. This specifically would be first touch because this is the first time that level has come and touched this. That sets up a future move. Uh, first touch versus first test is two different theories and they, and they mean two different things, okay? So when, 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 this, when this level is drawn, this trend line, that acts as a level of support and resistance on both sides. Same with this wedge that I drew. This acts as support and resistance within it and outside of it, okay? So when this move was unfolding, we saw the complete dump down, right? And then we saw a move up, touch a level, which is resistance here. Right? It actually touched two levels of resistance, two, two levels of resistance, although this wasn't resistance. This was still support technically. Um, more advanced, not talking about that and why. But this is still support, even though we close below it. Common misconception. This is still support until it reaches a certain point. So we actually go up and we are between two levels here, support and resistance. Okay, we go up, we touch resistance, we come down, we create this trend here. Now, this is very important because you have to remember this is a level of support and resistance on both sides, right? So here it's supporting our move. We move down, we touch it, we move down, we touch it, we move down, we touch it. Then we completely break. Uh, you'll notice, you'll notice uh, this then creates another what's called a wedge. This wedge then creates more support and resistance. The, the inside of this wedge ends up being support and resistance. So we come down, we establish the wedge from this high to this low. Uh, this bottom right here, this swing low, is the identifier for this wedge, okay? So we come up, we touch this level of resistance, although it's not resistance, it's still support. Remember that uh, we touch that level, we come back down, we kind of do this dance, and we touch the bottom of this wedge. We then come up and look at what we do. We touch uh, kind of an intersecting point where we have actually two levels. Um, 
we actually have our, our red trend line that we drew that's uh, showing the ending of this downtrend and we have the wedge. So right here, we were gonna see rejection 100% of the time. So to properly see levels and to properly identify how to trade, we need to see these things with, with great clarity. And, and that is why it is so important to identify levels properly because like clockwork, I can't make this stuff up. This is, this is a chart I made and I'm gonna press play right now so you guys can see how this move uh, unfolded and how this was respected. Uh, I, I, I can't make this stuff up. This is, this is how the move was. Once it's on trading view, that's it, it's final. So I'm gonna press forward. It's going to take a second to load and you can see that as this move went right it respected every single level in great detail um, to, to, to exactly how I charted it because it has a very specific way of seeing these levels right so right here we can see both trends because there's that intersecting of trends uh, we have two levels to break so there's a high chance that we are going to fail this break. And actually, it's not a high chance that we're gonna fail. We are automatically set up to fail because this is what's called a first test. Again, not getting into that, but the, this is not a chance or a, or a uh, sometimes this is happening, sometimes this is not. For, for a very specific reason, this is always rejecting. So the smart trader would have known to uh, short this here, come back down, right? Rebuy these levels in here, it comes up. It retests this. This is very important for another reason, which we're not gonna get into. They would have shorted here. They would have come down. This is where I bought entry. So uh, I wonder if I can zoom, how far I can zoom in on this. That's it. So when I started this chart, you can see this green box is the start of this move. I bought here and I instantly uh, uploaded this for people to follow, okay? Uh, immediately following that move comes up, breaks through a level, comes back down, bounces off this level, comes right up, to test this exact level, right? Next, it comes down to test our trend support line because remember, we crossed it, it was resistance, we come up top, now it's support. We test it there, we test it again, it fails. We come back down and we reject going back into this wedge. So you guys can kind of see and understand, and the reason I showed you this, um, you won't be able to quite follow the nuances, uh, or maybe maybe, you, maybe you're really advanced and you can, but for those of you who can or can't, um, it's, it's really important to know that levels are an exact science. There's an exact reason why things happen, and, and this is why I cannot teach levels in one video, because within all of this there's multiple theories that tie into this there is the idea of level relativity strength there's the idea of first touch versus first test there's the idea of well, i shouldn't say idea i should say theory there's the theory of support lost in here although we never gained support at certain levels like right here this ends up being support lost for another reason right so this is not something i could teach people in in the matter of dissecting uh one video so uh, really important to know that these trends, right? Wedges and trends are levels as well. As support and resistance, right? These trend lines that we draw, and we'll learn how to draw them in the future, they also act as support and resistance. It's a very important concept for people to understand. These wedge patterns also act as support and resistance, right? It's the, it's the testing of multiple levels that tie into the relative strength of a move, the strength of relativity as I call it, um, with, with relationship and in regards to how strong these levels are here, your actual swing lows and swing highs and different things like that. So in, in respect to how strong these are, um, so, so a very important concept to know, you know, one last time to kind of further develop this uh, in your guy's mind. There are forms of support and resistance, which are levels of swings, right? Swing lows, swing highs, different things we'll get into in a few minutes, uh, but also trend lines and patterns, right? Things, things like these wedges, when these wedges are created and, and you guys properly identify how to, how to make them, they are support and resistance. Same with the back sides of these trends, okay? This, this trend line, and that's very important to know uh, that, that both sides, right? This would just kind of be looked at if, if we were in the move, right? And we were only at the point where we are testing the bottom side of this as resistance. We need to know that as we come on top of it, the back side is also support. So they, they continuously act as support and resistance. And this trend could potentially be dragged out to up here and could potentially um, depending on how the move is going, also at, be acting as support and resistance if this is following this uptrend. If we are following and respecting what the move is happening as this is unfolding, this could actually be dragged out to 
uh, another another 40 days and be respected as a level. So it's very important to know that levels don't just come in the form of uh, the bottoms and tops of candlesticks. They come in the form of the, both sides of trend lines uh, and all sides of wedges. Okay. So how do we see these levels? The bread and butter of this uh, beginner's course. There are four ways to see levels on candles. Uh, let's in our minds put away the idea of trend lines and wedges because we will not be talking about those uh, anymore in this lesson other than just to uh, enlighten you guys and, and let you know and be aware of right now that in the future when we are doing when we are identifying trends and, and learning how to do those and wedges those will act as support and resistance so it was important to uh, briefly discuss that so we know that let's set it back in our mind uh, it's no more relevant for it's, it's no longer relevant for this um, course part three here so how do we see levels swing highs swing lows what does this all mean okay let's get our chart back up and let's clear this and let's go to a weekly chart okay this is going to take some time to develop you guys to understand this uh, it is a very advanced concept. There, there is a lot of nuances uh, within it, like I've been saying this whole entire time, this whole entire lesson. But for the purpose of this lesson, to start uh, opening your guys' mind to how do I identify proper levels. We are going to talk about four different ways that levels are identified. Okay, uh, Within those four levels, there are two categories. Okay, There is swing highs and swing lows. So keep that in mind. There's two things we're looking at here. Swing lows and a swing low will look something like this, right? A swing low and a swing high and a swing high will look something like that. Okay, so we have two different levels we're looking at. Swing highs, swing lows. Now, we are going to break those two those two categories of highs and lows with their own subcategory. A swing high and a swing low within that move. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, I'm going to show you. This is a level, let me put my magnet tool on. This is a swing low, okay? And this is a swing high. Those are the two things we just discussed. Now, there is also the swing high, the high point of that low candle, which ends up being right here, and the low point of that high candle, which ends up being here. Now, that sounds really weird, and, and I'm going to discuss why before we move on. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's delve into the psychology of this for a second. When we have a move, okay, we are coming down here, and maybe this is going to be illustrated better on a, no, you know what, we'll do, we'll do it on a weekly chart for now, and then we can go further into a daily chart. When we are moving down, and we are establishing this level right here, when we are establishing, okay, I'm going to just, uh, oops, I'm just going to zoom in here. When we are establishing this swing low, there is something that happens, okay? This candle here is developing the top side and the bottom side. Uh, just like, whoops, just like this candle here, this swing high candle is developing the top and low side. And why it's doing that is so that the move has something to fight for, I guess would be the best way of putting it. And, and it's gonna be easiest to illustrate on a high candle first before we talk about this low candle. So when you are coming up on a move, okay, you create this high point right here, that is a level. You also are creating the swing low of that high candle as a level as well. And the reason being is that there is a low point that is being fought for after this swing high. So if you notice this candlestick here, this candlestick here, here and here are all fighting to stay above this swing low on this swing high of this candle, or I shouldn't say swing low. It's the low of the swing high candle. So they are all fighting. They are deciding whether uh, it is moving up or down, or up or down, right? And this is establishing the levels right here. The low of the swing high, the swing high of the swing high, and the same thing on the low side. The swing low, right? So if we were to uh, take this out for a second, the first level that gets created is the swing low. Right, and the second level that gets created is the high of that swing low, and for it's it's for the exact same reason, right? After that move, there has to be some type of decision where if this move has completed its uh, downtrend and finished dumping, and it is now going to move up, 
or if this move is going to to swing low here, kind of do something like this and, and it's actually still in distribution and it actually creates a new swing low. So it actually creates a new candlestick right here, right? With a new wick down. And that's why, because there has to be an end to this move somewhere, okay? This move right here, there has to be an end to it. You see, and funny how that, uh, that works out, how we line up and this ends up acting as uh, support, right? Uh, not important for now, just a quick little example but this move has to have a low and a high so that it can say okay this this dump is done now we need to re-establish support to go up in price which is accumulation we need to we need to enter accumulation before we go up in price right and we saw that as we moved over to this daily chart uh now let's look at that daily chart and see how this has changed oops on on the uh daily chart what happened here in this section you see we created a swing low we came up that's, that's the swing high right there. And you can see how when we chart this on a weekly chart, it may look, it may look like one or two candles, but realize that, that that's a weekly chart. There's lots of moves in there. There's four hour moves, there's one hour moves, there's daily moves. This level was identified right here. The swing high on the weekly and the swing low, right? Those were the two levels we identified. Then we can see that level is respected. Like magic guys, it's not a strategy, it's, it's the way proper trading is done. This is how you properly identify levels. And this is a very basic overview of it, but you can see how well this is respected, right? Then we've created this zone. And before that we touch here, well, we don't come down and we don't actually retest this bottom side of this level, right? We actually find support. And, and we already know that this whole zone right here is accumulation. Well, actually it would be right there is accumulation. Uh, so, Let's just delete those. We already know this whole zone right here is accumulation. And, and this can be seen as a form of accumulation if you're catching a falling knife. Actually, the very first form of accumulation would be this candlestick right here as a safe trade, this yellow one right here. That would be the first form of accumulation uh, when we see that kind of rejection. Get to that later. Don't focus on that now. Focus on uh, why this level was created and how the swing high and the swing low create a micro zone to see if this dump is done or if it's actually gonna move up, and it, and it actually does, it moves up over. Now let's go back to the weekly, right? And we can see, it, 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 you, you wouldn't see it on a weekly, but that's why we chart this on a weekly first. It's for the concept of level strength relativity, which don't focus on that. You don't know it yet, it's, maybe you do, maybe you don't, it, it doesn't matter. What we're focusing on now is how to identify these levels. Now we can see proper accumulation, right? Um, we already mapped out these levels on top, so, so we can see that on, on the daily chart, right, uh, distribution happens right here, okay? We go down, look at that. We test this level, which is the swing low. We reject it. We come down again further, and uh, I wonder, let's just back this up for a second. I wonder where that level is being respected from. Could it possibly be here, this swing high? Uh, yeah, sure looks like it. Right? Or could it be this swing low on this high candle? That's what it is right there. It's This was a swing high on a weekly. That's the low of that high. So these levels are getting respected throughout time. They are not going away. They are not disappearing. These levels, uh, they, they stay there. They, they stay there for an infinity. Okay. Uh, again, another advanced concept we'll get into, but you, you can see how these levels are getting respected. And you know within this move here, it tests one level, breaks, tests the second level here comes back and, and retest the top of this level and then retest the bottom, right? And then after it loses this bottom, it goes into this move down because it lost this level, right? So now going back to the weekly and uh, kind of taking all of our scribbles out here. Let's take that out, let's take this out, let's take this out. Um, you can now see why the swing highs and the swing lows of candles are so important because again, uh, and this is very important to understand, this candle is creating that zone of what it's fighting for in the future. This candle, this candle, this candle, this one, they are all fighting for what this candle created. Uh, and in the future, look at what's happening. Uh, when it loses a level, right, it's coming back up and it tests it here, right? And then it rejects it and it comes back up and breaks it and pulls it back down. And then it tests this level again. This level that was created here is created indefinitely for the future, right? So this recent move up that we saw on, uh, on ZRX, news related, well, look what it did. News related, it tested a level, right? Funny how that works. So that is how you guys properly identify 
levels, swing highs, swing lows, and the high and the low of those establishing candles. And, and we will call these establishing candles, okay? Because they establish the move. Well, they don't establish the move, but they, they, they establish the zone that's to be respected. Now, let's see what's next on, on the list here, or if I should further go into that. Uh, we broke it down into two parts of any moves. Uh, why is a swing low on a swing high candle at a level? Uh, yeah, we, we, we pretty much covered everything in that uh, little lesson that I just did there. One advanced topic for now, highs and lows, gaining and losing them. I will briefly go over one advanced topic, but I don't want to lose too many new and beginning traders in uh, advanced theories. Before I do that, I am going to break this down further. So for those people who are new in advance, because I've really only done this on the one week, I'd like to dive further a bit. And uh, maybe maybe let's chart this out and uh, establish some levels and then and then look at it on a on a different time frame. Okay, so we've got swing low, right? We've got that high, and you can see that again established that zone that it fought for those two candles, which ended up being 14 days of fighting. Um, you know, let's let's just just to solidify this, uh, just to just to kill any doubt in anybody's mind that this is the proper way to identify levels. I, I very easily uh, took the right concept. Okay, I took the correct concept in developing these levels and I drew two lines and that's how simple it can be, but you have to understand it and you have to be able to dive further. And, and, and this is very basic, but you guys can see how accurate proper levels can be. We, we just charted this and uh, we have a touch top, touch bottom. Well, look what happens. Touch top doesn't actually go to retest bottom, so it moves up. The same, same exact thing uh, that we saw over here. Establish the top zone, establish the bottom zone. It goes, it touches up, tests this level. It doesn't actually have a chance to retest down and for a reason that's very specifically important. Uh, and then it goes up and it, and it takes a move up, right? So this move is acting parabolic uh, to, to the exact way it was trading in the past. And parabolic means like a mirror. It is acting parabolic to what it did. So it did one thing, it's repeating that same pattern, okay? Now let us go back to the weekly, okay? And, and just identify a few more of these on the weekly. And we're gonna leave the weekly lines as purple, okay? So we know. Uh, okay, what do we have here? The swing high of this move didn't end till here. Let's put our magnet tool back on. Uh, didn't until here and the bottom ended right there. Oh, oh no, that's not what I want. Wrong tool. Whoops. Bottom ends right there. And, uh, and, and you know, just for future reference, let's again, let's hammer this point home. Level respected. Oh, 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 oh. Magnet tool. Okay. Look at this. Level respected right there. Levels respected right there. Right. Level respected right there. Level broken here, level closed and respected here. Okay, so just so you guys know, uh, these are a few lines on a chart that are, are showing. Oh, and look at this one here, level respected here too. It's it's a basic concept, but a lot of people get it wrong. So uh, let's continue. Uh, let's not you know do that thing that I'm doing, which is the the see I told you so or whatever you want to call it. Uh, okay, we got a move down. We've got a swing low. This one's a little tougher to identify because in here there's going to be a one day period where that swing low was actually created. So this is an instance where we would, oops, I don't want to create that, where we would go and look at this move and see where the actual swing low exists. And the actual swing low is right there. So this is the swing low before the move up. It's not these candles here because the move up was there. And uh, that's, that's pretty important to, to see that and realize that. Oh, huh, my manga tool was on. It's just not, am I crazy? What's going on? I don't know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so swing low was created. Okay, uh, the high of this candle looks like it would have been right here on the weekly. So something to be, uh, well, let's just go back and look. So that was the low and then this will be the high. Okay. Oh. Magnet tool's not on again. Okay. Having a little bit of trouble here with doing this. So those are some levels right there. 
let's break this down into the daily now. These are these are purple weekly levels, and, and we can see they're being respected all the way through. Uh, touch up, wick down rejection, uh, wick down rejection, wick down rejection, uh, wick down test level, test level, uh, wick down rejection, test level. Comes up, tries to break a level, rejection. Breaks the level, tests back down. Uh, tries to snap two levels, fails, tests back down. Tries to snap three levels, uh, gains support. Okay, so that's the next thing we're gonna talk about a little bit. But just to further drive this point home, again, I want to break this down into a daily chart. And uh, you know, we could even do a four hour chart and, and you guys can see how these levels are respected on a four hour chart. And, and you know, the, the finer you break these levels down, uh, the finer it will get respected, okay? Uh, so, so let's just go, let, let, let's just go from here. We, we could, we could do this thing all the way back in time, but the, the, you know, we got levels here. Look at that, how it was respected. One, two, three, four times comes down within this move. Let's see, comes up. Look at that test down on the four hour test three back up there comes down. This would have been a level possibly identified somewhere else comes back up into that. Uh, and it's testing down, it's coming back. You can, you can see how religiously this level is being respected. And even this is a four hour chart. So look at how many times this level was respected. And we only drew one line, but we can see this is exactly what is happening. It is respecting it to a T. The next level we drew, look at this, touches there. Uh, wicks past it showing future break, right? Comes back down, goes over, it comes down, goes over, it comes down, goes over, comes back up, fails. To retouch this level so what's going to happen it's going to it's going to dump right comes back down look at that four hour test it four times comes down look at that level test that three times comes down respects it tries to break it fails comes up test this level here fails comes back down test it right there to the science wicks past it here which is an important uh lesson for future uh, comes down test this level again comes up test this level again right rides this support line before it breaks down two levels like it did in the past, has trouble breaking back over, right? This is an identified level here. This level starts right here. Look at this, has trouble breaking over, comes, test back down, right? So you can see the pattern that is happening here of support and resistance and how finite this is respecting that level, those, those, those initial easy levels that we drew, um, how, how well it's respecting it on, on every single uh, turn of this thing. And, and look, again, we, we, don't, we don't actually come up to test the level, just parabolic to what's happened in the past, how, how we've already seen when, when uh, ZRX is not coming up to test the level, it is dumping or it, if, if, if it is rejecting the opposite side, the inverse, it is actually pumping, right? So, and, and that's not specific to ZRX, that's specific to another theory. Uh, more advanced, another lesson, I hate saying it because I love teaching, but that's what, what it's gonna be. Uh, and, and you can see all these micro moves in here and how finite this, this gets respected. And, and these levels, you can't like, you can't make this up. All I did was draw a few lines properly identified. Look at this. Touch is a level, test, touch, comes up, can't break, what's it gonna do? It's gonna test down again, test down again. You'll notice how it's not moving up because it's not testing the level, right? It has to test this level first. Once this is lost, it has to test, right? It's never gonna gain that level. Oh, and then, and then look, since it doesn't gain that level, it actually dumps down parabolic again to what's happened in the past. Test this level, right? Comes up, tries to break it, can't can't, finally breaks the level, right? Finally wicks past it, then what happens in the future? Look at that, once it tested that level, all of a sudden we're moving up, right? So I hope you guys can see the importance and the accuracy that properly identifying levels, uh, even, even just wrapping your minds around the concept of if you identify levels correctly, they will treat you very well and they will be respected for an infinity. Uh, so with that said, I think that that point has been proven. Uh, what, what else can you say? I mean, it's, it's, it's black and white plain, uh, simple as it can be. It's not simple. I shouldn't say that. It's not, it's very advanced, very complex. I make this look easy because I've been doing this a long time. I've mastered this over years. Um, this is why I can't teach it in one lesson because there is so much to it. So what I am going to do though, is I'm going to go over one advanced topic. 
in small detail i'm not going to fully teach this right now but for people who are kind of have maybe a few questions i thought it would be a good idea to show one advanced topic here uh, which is these highs and lows and and gaining and losing them and i thought this was important for this lesson because i wanted to show you guys that there is a reason why a level is gained and lost okay uh, it is not what people think it is it is not this okay let me show you something here Okay, I, I want to show you guys how levels are lost and gained. <sighs> now, again, this is a very advanced uh, topic. This is, if, if you're having trouble following or uh, if it doesn't quite make sense, if, or if you're not grasping it fully, that's okay. Uh, th this is something that will be covered in great t detail in the future. But I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to give you guys a little piece of this advanced um, discussion or, or this advanced piece of this lesson of, of how a level is actually lost and gained we've, we've identified how they're marked very basically and we will break this down in the future we will go into hourly levels we will go into four hour 12 hour daily weekly monthly this this lesson right now is just to show you how how to properly when you are charting how to properly identify those levels for yourselves um, so now i'm going to show you something that again uh don't get frustrated if you don't understand it because this is this is highly advanced and it took me many many years to fully understand this Okay, let's look at this move for a second. I Want to I want to explain something to you guys This move, okay, people have this kind of misconception that uh, Okay, so let, let, let's 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 take this purple line right here and we're gonna make the support lines thicker and the resistance lines uh, heavier or, or, or sorry, thinner. So, so the thin line will be resistance, the thick line will be support. Okay, so people have this idea and this conception that when you close, and this is on the four hour chart, doesn't matter if it's on the four, the daily, the weekly, it doesn't matter. When you close below a level, you know, when the candle closes below it, right? They have this, con they, they have this idea that that means the level is lost or the level is gained, that is, that is not true. Just like this level is not gained there, just like we didn't gain this this resistance, we didn't gain this as support here just because we moved and closed over it. It doesn't matter what time frame, it doesn't matter if it's the daily, it doesn't matter if it was the the weekly, it doesn't matter. It, it, and, and you'll see why. You know, we come down here and we do this. This is not a level loss. This is still support. This thick line, you notice I haven't changed anything yet because we haven't lost support or gained resistance or, or anything like that. This is not losing a level. All the stuff in between here is not losing a level. You want to know when you lose a level? You lose a level when you wick past it. So in this instance right here, okay, this is the zone we are in right here between the support and resistance. Okay, the moment we lose this level right here, the support that we currently have, I'm going to change it to a thin line, okay? We have not lost it yet. This is still support. Just like over here, how you see the move goes up and down a few times. This is still support. This is not resistance until you wick past the next level. Okay, so in this moment where I have marked that we wicked this level, we lost this as support. That is when we lost support. This is not lost support in here. This is still support. This is something that took me many years talking to many different professional traders, figuring out uh, many different things to, to, to make sense and to understand how support and resistance gets gained and lost. These levels get gained and lost when you wick past the next level. Just like if we want to regain this, we can't close over top of it. We actually have to wick this level. So let's walk through this move a bit, okay? Right here, we lost that level. Now, this is our new support. Oops. This is our new support and resistance zone. That is where we are living right now. This was lost. We are no longer there. Okay, let's move past. Let's move past. Okay, here's a prime example. This is not lost here when we, when we move down. That is why we come back up. This is when we have lost this level. When we wick past the next level down. Okay, and you're going to see how this works in the future as it as we, we unfold this move. We are now living in this here. And this is a perfect example because look at what's going to happen here. 
And actually, before we move on, I want you guys to know something. I don't chart any of these in advance. I don't do any prep work. I don't look at, I didn't, I didn't pick ZRX or OX, ZeroX, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I didn't pick this coin because I, I, I pre-did this lesson and I looked at all these levels and I figured it out all beforehand. I do this stuff on the fly. I have no idea what's going to come in the future. Well, I actually know because I've charted like this for many years with great success. And this is holds true 100% of the time. Okay, uh, I don't chart these prior. I am doing this on the fly. Okay, I am doing this in the moment. So just so you guys know, I don't know what's going to happen with this coin other than what I do uh, charting this. Okay, so this comes here, right? We have not gained this level yet. And that is why you see that even though we close up top here, we still come down and respect to the level, right? Until we actually break it because this is the zone we're living in, right? Let's move this box down here. When we wicked that level, this is our support and resistance zone, okay? There we go. You see when we come up here and we do this and we wick that level, we actually, in that moment, okay? Let me just delete this. Right there, right there, right there. In this moment right here, when we wick past this, we are gaining the previous level. We have now gained this as support. Okay, we have now gained that as support, as you can see. And actually, technically, we wicked two levels here. So technically, we gained this as well. Technically, we have two levels of support. So what does that tell me for the future? That tells me we're going to push up past this because we wicked the next level. And we actually gain support. So we actually gain the, the rights and the momentum to move up. And, and that's why we don't actually even test down to this level. We don't even test this level because we gain the support. So there's a very specific reason why this move did this and why it dumped here, right? And, and it stopped right here before it could test the level because we actually gained support, right? Oops, that's okay. Well, the move forward's not working. Let's let's re uh, let's reestablish this here. So we actually gained this, okay? Now let's move on forward to the move. We, we, we've, we gained this level here, right? This is actually already gained. We never lost it. This was support gained back here, right? This move here is support gained for here, right? This is support gained. As we move past and we wick this level, right? We then gained this support as well, okay? So let's walk through this move now. And, and look how well, let's zoom in here, just to further this theory and to, to prove to you guys that this is the way it works, Look at how well this move respected support. You know, typically you're going to see something straight dump right away. Look at this. Comes down, rejects, closes above it. Comes down, tries to dump, goes up, rejects, closes above it. Right? For a third time, comes down, rejects, still closes on top of it. For a fourth time, it finally breaks. When it breaks and closes, it is looking to break this level. It is looking to break that support into resistance. And look at what happens. It tries to move back up over the level, rejects and wicks down instantly in the next candle. Therefore, in that moment, okay, turning this back to resistance, okay? Now let's keep moving. Remember, to regain this level now, to regain this level that we just lost, we would have to wick this, okay? So let's let's look at what happens, right? In that instance that we lose it from there. We go down, we come up, we respect the level, we come down, we respect the level, down, we respect the level, come back, respect the level, respect the level, and so forth. So you guys can see that this is the way that levels are lost, gained, created, and it's nothing to do with closing. It's all about the wicks and how candles move. And now, oh, I forgot to turn this. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this actually was was lost like that. You guys followed. That's okay. You, you, my, my audience is smart. You guys followed exactly what I was uh, explaining. I didn't need to color code that level, but I'm going to do it now anyways for clarity. So you guys can see exactly how this move plays out and when the level is gained and 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 how it's respected and when it's lost and how that's respected, even on the climb back up, right? Even on the climb back up, the first touch is rejected. This is rejected. This is rejected because this is how you truly identify levels. Again, I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed, like you don't get it. This took me many years to, to do this. This took me many uh, attempts, many, many books, many uh, talking to traders. And there is no material on this out there. This is the thing. There is no books or specific material that teaches this stuff. This is things that I have learned and other traders have learned and real professionals who are institutional level traders. These are, are, are the real reasons 
why these moves happen in the marketplace. This is not something that you can just pick up a book and learn. It's not publicized material. This is the way support works and resistance works. And you can see it in the chart. This doesn't lie. This is to the T identical to what I'm showing you guys. This is exactly how it works. Okay. So again, don't, don't feel lost. This was just a brief touch. We will go into this much further in greater detail. We will, we will uh, further dissect this in the future. Don't feel too discouraged now or lost and, 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 and have some solace in the fact that uh, it's taken many traders many years to figure this out, uh, myself included. It took me years to figure this out and actually properly apply it. I wish I had someone to streamline this material for me like this to show me, uh, okay, this is what actually happens. You know, I went on this big journey to figure this stuff out uh, and gleaned from other traders much better than myself and, uh, and, 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 t and took from them what they learned and they could streamline to, to traders uh, then they're forward in, in their careers and then them to me and then now me to you guys. And it's this constant refining of a skill, right? So that's levels, uh, a, a little advanced at the end, but uh, levels of support and resistance, how they're lost, how they're gained where they're created. And I hope this uh, video was insightful for you guys. This was a big, um, this was a big moment in, in trading for me when I, when, I, when I realized how levels were truly identified and what it means to gain and lose them. Uh, and, and that's how I can chart the things that I chart sometimes and you guys see my, my trading view. And, and uh, like I showed you earlier, that AE example, there's a very specific reason, that example I went through earlier on the chart that I charted that coin AE, there's a very specific reason everything happens. So, uh, you know, with that knowledge, I hope you guys can see some of it now. And uh, this is like an aha moment or maybe uh, eye opening or maybe they're very boring for you. And if it's very boring for you, uh, you know, I applaud you because this is some pretty, pretty heavy stuff on a basic level. Uh, so that's it for now. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this course and the next one will be coming in a few days. Okay. Take care everyone.